Welcome into the Pat Bowen Fieldhouse for Broncos Country Connected. I'm Alexis Perry, happy to be joined by the voice of Broncos football on KOA Radio, the legendary Dave Logan, here to share his perspective of the state of the Broncos entering yet another crucial offseason. So Dave, obviously first we have to start with George Payton's biggest decision of his career so far, the hiring of Nathaniel Hackett. What do you think the hiring of Hackett says about the direction that Payton's trying to take this team in? I mean, anytime you make a, a coaching change, there's understandable excitement with the new coach, yeah. right? I mean, the new coach is, he hadn't lost a game. I was struck with how he's put his staff together and the youth of the staff. And uh, I think there's gonna be an excitement level. I think there's gonna be an enthusiasm level. I think they'll have great ability to relate to these players. I'm a believer that you have to bring a certain amount of juice right. to the game, right? The game, the intensity and the enthusiasm, and so I think that uh, I think Bronco fans are excited about what's uh, what's about to take place, and I think everybody is is really interested to see what Nathaniel Hackett can do. So it's safe to say, when you think about the youth of this coaching staff, this is something that should then be embraced, not something that people should be concerned about. No, I understand people sort of pushing back and saying, "Well, wait a minute, I mean, you've got uh, you've got 11 coaches that uh, coaching their position. This will be the first time they've done right. that in the NFL." I think there's validity to that. I think we're going to have to wait and see sort of how they do things. You know, I think they they also will bring the necessary understanding of both offense and defense and special teams. Right. Uh, Nathaniel, I actually played for. Nathaniel's dad, uh, Paul. He, Paul was an offensive coordinator a couple of years when I was in Cleveland playing for the Browns. And that's a football family. And I, it, you know what? And I, to me, you cannot overstate the importance of that. When you see kids that basically grow up with football, grow up in a football family, there just seems to be an ability that maybe others that haven't had that luxury uh, have to work harder to find. Well, I'm sure Nathaniel's system is very similar to his father's and of course has been modernized over time. So what do you expect this offensive system to look like here in 2022? Well, we had, uh, we had Nathaniel on the show on KOA and uh, you know, one of the first things he said is, listen, we're a big believer of the outside zone. That rings true to what I believe you have to be able to do on offense and what this franchise over the years when they've been really successful, that's been a big component of what they do. This will be, I think, a little bit of a challenge for the offensive line, not that they can't do it, but it's gonna look different, right? Athleticism is gonna be really important. If that's really what they wanna do and that's the foundation of what they wanna do in the running game, that sets up everything in the passing game. Well, defensive coordinator Ijero Ivero he comes from the Capers Fangio Steely coaching tree, so rumor has it that this defensive scheme could look really similar to Vic Fangio's. If that's the case, how beneficial could that be for this defense here this season? Well, it'll be if that's the case, that'll be easier on the players, right? right. Because they they are they're going to be used to, even though the terminology more than likely will change. You know, you mentioned Dom Capers. I think that was one of the really big hires for Hackett. Um, this is a guy that's been a head coach twice, right? been a coordinator forever, has been through the battles. And I think, you know, as a young head coach, there will be times during the during the regular season that, you know what, you're gonna experience some bumps and it might even be some potholes. And it, it, nothing better than to have a guy who's been through that that can sort of talk you off the ledge. If you've had a two or three game losing streak and, you know, you're about ready to uh, implode. I, and that's where I think Dom Capers, aside from being a really smart defensive mind, I think he'll be able to help Nathaniel Hackett and maybe a lot of these young coaches. Who do you think benefits the most from George Payton and Nathaniel Hackett bringing in an entire new regime? You and I have talked about this. I don't think they've gotten everything out of the talent on the offensive side that they could have or that they should have. I look at this receiving core. Um, they're much better than what we have seen the last few years. From a wide receiver standpoint, and even tight end standpoint, I, I would be very, very excited if I were still playing that, uh, you know what, we're, we're gonna be able to do some stuff that we just have not done the last few years. Well, we all know the quarterback position is the biggest area of concern heading into this off season. How do you hope to see George Payton address the position? I'm not going out on the limb here. If Aaron Rodgers is available, I, I would hope that George Payton would do everything in his power to make that happen. Now, whether or not he's gonna be available, you know, who knows? And then you have Russell Wilson, will he be out of Seattle? I mean, I can't think of another year um, that I remember there being so much uncertainty about so many quarterbacks. There, I mean, we're talking about 
maybe seven or eight guys, a quarter of the league, starting quarterbacks potentially moving next year. So, um, you know, I've heard Kirk Cousins' name and, you know, people have called and said, well, George Payton was in Minnesota. Does that mean they're getting Kirk Cousins? I think Kirk in the right offense can be a quality quarterback. He's not a guy that's going to make things happen and move around and do all that. You got to block it up for him. But I think he's, he's smart enough and accurate enough with the ball. And last year was his best year. So, um, I'm, I'm like everybody else. I'm just sort of stepping back and saying, wow, this is going to be interesting. What are some of the other glaring holes on this roster that you hope to see the Broncos address? Well, I mean, I think on defense, I, to me, um, you know, the defense was good enough last year to keep that team in the game. Yep. But again, my opinion, that was not a dominant defense. I mean, people have talked about last year's defense and compared last year's defense with the Super Bowl 50 defense. You know, I, to me, that's that's not a good comparison. The, the, the Super Bowl 50 defense had a propensity to turn people over, to create big plays, to make big plays, to win games on their own at times. We didn't, the offense, see, that. We didn't see that last year. The offense in Super Bowl 50 that season, even with Peyton, and Peyton was compromised, but the offense was middle of the road. So, so I think from a defensive standpoint, I think you need a couple of guys up front. I mean, Shelby Harris had a had, I thought, a, a good year. Draymond Jones, I, I still like, even though I think some, some Broncos fans view him as an enigma. To me, he's still a talented guy that can play, but I think you need a couple of hosses up front. I think you need an edge pass rusher or two. I know George has, has talked about that. I certainly agree. What are you going to do with the inside linebackers, with Alexander Johnson and uh, with Josie Jewell? You know, I don't know. Um, you're probably not going to have Kareem Jackson back. Uh, you certainly can build around Pat Sertan, uh, but what do you do with the other corners? Right. You know, the other corners, um, for whatever the reason, I think if they were sitting here today, they would say, we didn't have the kind of season that we wanted. So do you think that was a byproduct of the defensive scheme or how they were coached or whatever? Or do you think that that was them? And if you think that was them, you've got to go get somebody else. So I, I, think, I think there are plenty of moves to be made uh, on the defensive side of the football. It's not just going to be the offense. Well, this is George Payton's second offseason as a general manager. What can we take from 2021 and really imply about what this 2022 offseason could look like for him? Well, I, you know, a couple of things I like about George. Um, he, brings, he brings a feeling of stability when he talks. It's like there's... Um, you, you got a grown up in the room. You got a guy that's been through this, uh, that understands the task, that knows what the expectation level is of not only this organization, but for, for Broncos fans, and is willing to, to address it. And um, so I, I'm anxious to see what he does. This, this to me, you know, last year was his first year, and he still had the COVID stuff going on and Zoom stuff. And, but this year, hopefully, that's going to all settle down. And this, to me, will be a real, this season, what he does in free agency, what he does in the draft, uh, will be a real indicator in terms of his mindset, how he, how he views this team. But, um, yeah, I, I, I like the direction so far. And uh, I'm anxious to see what he does in the next mm, two months. Well, Dave, thank you so much for your time. Good to see you, Alexis. It's so good to see you. Well, coming up after the break, the Denver 7 crew will discuss free agency and who the Broncos might try to re-sign for the 2022 season. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Broncos Country Connected. With free agency less than a month away, I'm sure you're starting to wonder which players the Broncos could aim to bring back and which guys from the outside they may consider bringing in. For more on who Denver might prioritize once free agency begins March 16th, let's check in with Lionel Bienvenue, Troy Rank, and Ryan Harris. Thanks, Alexis, and welcome to our Denver 7 segment brought to you by 1-800-GOT-JUNK. Well, Ryan and Troy, the brand new Broncos coaching staff is pretty much complete. Uh, it's a lot of first timers when it comes to head coach coordinators, too. So, Troy, what does the staff do now? What is going on 
behind the walls at the UC Health Training Center. Well, you got to dig in and find out who you are. It's kind of like self-scouting during a bye week. The new coaches need to find out which players on their current roster they want to keep as they start to enter the combine and free agency because clearly this team has needs, Lionel. We know that, but you need to know who you want to keep first, especially offensively. Look at the line, offensive line. I think they're going to have to upgrade there, and there's a lot of free agents on defense. So who does Coach Ivaro want on his defense? He's got to have those talks with Coach Hackett. Yeah, I mean, this new coaching staff, Ryan, uh, they're in there. Are their heads spinning right now? Because <laughs> there's a lot to be done in a short period of time. Free agency officially starts March 16th. Yeah, well, coaches love this part of the season, Lionel and Troy. They just love, there's so much film to watch. We've got to break it down. We've got to find our guys on our roster. So they're used to this. This is what coaches love. They get in their nice, comfy sweatpants and get unlimited sunflower seeds and waters. It's fantastic. But they have meaningful work to do. And in many ways, this is the toughest part of being an incoming coaching staff. You don't have experience with the players who you're coaching. You're just watching them on film. You don't know necessarily what, what techniques or what coaching points they were given on a certain play. So they have a lot of work to do. And they're really deciding the futures of many players' careers. Yeah, we got 27 free agents for the Broncos, guys, between exclusive rights free agents. Uh, you got unrestricted free agents and restricted free agents. I mean, we're talking names like uh, Bridgewater, Melvin Gordon, Bryce Callahan, Kyle Fuller. Uh, some tough decisions are coming up fast on this new coaching staff, Troy. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you've got to figure out who you are. Now, is this a team in transition, or are you trying to get back to the playoffs next year? Because that shapes some of the decisions. That's why you kept Von Miller last year. That's why you kept Kareem Jackson. But do you move on and go to Caden Stearns and go younger in the se secondary? Bryce Callahan, I would love for them to keep, but it's got to be a team-friendly deal because of the health issues. Time to move on from Kyle Fuller. Kenny Young, pair him with Baron Browning, bring back Jonas Griffith. I like what they've got at linebacker, but you're right, Lionel. A lot of tough decisions, and they have clear needs at outside linebacker right tackle and cornerback and you look at the names uh, Ryan Malik Reed Josie Jewell AJ Johnson Jackson Callahan Fuller Young defensively man they got to do something here Ejiro Evero is going to have to hit the ground running he absolutely <laughs> will I, I like bringing Alexander Johnson back I thought he did a great job at that middle linebacker position I'm with Troy though Bryce Callahan and Kyle Fuller both are 30 those are going to be tough deals to sign and both players were not consistent throughout their time here in Denver. So I think that Alexander Johnson and Malik Reed are the top of the current players that they need to retain. But a guy like Josie Jewell is going to cost you money as well. A special teams guy who injured himself but was really growing in his role at linebacker. So I really like that defensive linebacker position to keep some of the current players and the rest are going to be filled through free agency. Yeah, you got current players you need to look at and think about keeping it. Also looking at free agents across the league, Ryan, who do you think would be a good fit here when you look at it? I'm thinking about Packers and Rams because that's where most of the coaches are coming from. Well, I like Harold Landry, a defensive end coming out of Tennessee, had 12 sacks this year. Uh, that's a player who can help you out. Darius Williams as well, a cornerback from the Los Angeles Rams, understands Evero's, Evero's defense. Those are two players I look at with $39 million in cap space, sixth most in the NFL. You can get those two quality players with some room to grow in case you get a big name free agent. Or a big name trade with some <laughs> cap room. Absolutely. Like Aaron Rodgers? <laughs> Look, uh, we've talked about this uh, every day, all day in Broncos country. Uh, but we know that Aaron and his fiancee Shailene Woodley have broken up. So the Boulder, Colorado, Denver connection is no longer there. So looking at quarterback, Troy, if not Rodgers, who? Well, if you don't get Rodgers, then you talk Russell Wilson. I don't think Seattle's going to move on from him. So let's take those two off the board. Are you okay, Broncos country, with Kirk Cousins? The issue is he's on a one-year deal. He would want an extension. I would like Kirk for one year. I really wouldn't want to invest multiple years in Kirk Cousins. Then it goes down to that next group of Jimmy Garoppolo, Huntley. Would you want Gardner Minshew? From a media <laughs> standpoint, yes, I would want Gardner <laughs> Minshew because I just want to interview his hair. That's it. His hair and his jorts. But, yes, they will have options. But I think then if you don't get Rodgers, you would have to go first-round quarterback, Lionel. Wow, first round, ninth pick in the draft. All right, uh, Ryan, let me ask you this. Do you think Drew Locke? has gone into Coach Hackett, Coach Outen, and said, hey, guys, look, I need a fresh start, a new offense. I can still be the guy. Uh, do you think amongst all this talk about Rodgers or somebody else that Drew Locke may have another shot 
with this new coaching staff? Well, he absolutely will. He's on the contract, and Drew Locke was drafted by the organization. Those guys get preferential treatment. I know I was one of them, right? But if you are Drew Locke, you have to go into Coach Hack and say, hey, I'm a student of the game. Teach me what you learned, what, what was so successful with Aaron Rodgers. How did Aaron Rodgers prepare? What did Aaron Rodgers really focus on in the red zone? Ask as many questions as possible so you stay that squeaky wheel in your head coach's ear. Because right now, the, conce- the, the perception of Drew Locke is that he can win you games but lose you more games than he can win you. He has the ability to turn that around. But it starts now by getting in the ear of Nathaniel Hackett and the offensive coordinators and saying, what can I learn? Teach me more. I'm a student of the game coaches love that all right guys thanks great stuff as always right now let's go back to you alexis coming up after the break meet the woman that helps create an unforgettable game day experience at power field at mile high broncos country connected is presented by carpet mill outlets bigger discounts better selections welcome back for this final segment of broncos country connected presented by ford The number one priority for the Broncos game presentation department on game day is to ensure fans have an unforgettable experience while providing the Broncos with the greatest home field advantage in the league. For this week's What It Takes to Make segment, we're happy to introduce you to Liz Coates, the woman orchestrating many of your favorite on-field moments throughout the game. My name is Liz Coates. I am the game entertainment manager uh, for the Denver Broncos and have been since 2014. My role with the organization is to manage or oversee anything that happens in game that's not football related. So I help script the scoreboard, entertainment, videos, things like that. And then I also facilitate and uh, manage everything that happens on field in pregame and halftime and then any breaks where we have entertainment happening on the field. What are you going to read? In three, two, one, next track. So on a typical game day, I'm normally here fairly early. We have staff come in normally about an hour after that, so I'm getting their schedules ready, printing scripts, and then we normally have a, a quick meeting with all of our, our promotion staff. So you probably want to have them ready to go and back on the field around 2.05. And then normally um, about three to four hours before kick is when rehearsals start. So we want to make sure that our timing is spot on, um, especially when we're trying to plan a flyover with an anthem performer. 20 minutes before kick, that's really when our show starts. We have our Stampede Fight Song, Perform with Cheerleaders. We have our Thunderstorm team. We're the only team in the NFL that has their own skydiving team that lands on the field. We have a parade of colors where we recognize military and first responder groups. We really kind of have created this atmosphere in that 20 minutes um, that I think is one of the best in the NFL. Denver Broncos. Once the game has started and and some of the things that happen during breaks, um, generally they're going to be more scoreboard driven. So I'm kind of helping the producer and the director up in the scoreboard keep track of how things are landing and, and making sure that the crowd is engaged. But the big thing that I'm doing once the game has started is prepping for halftime. We do a different halftime for every game. Every game has a different level of need, planning, setup, um, and then the number of staff that need to come down to help facilitate. So it really just kind of depends on the game and what we're doing. Some of my favorite halftimes are our Ring of Fame halftimes where we're honoring our Broncos legends for being inducted into the Ring of Fame. In 2021, we actually got to celebrate two Ring of Fame inductees. The first was Mike Shanahan, who was inducted into the Ring of Fame in 2020. So we did his on a game, and then our 2021 inductee was Peyton Manning. So we actually facilitated two separate Ring of Fame ceremonies. Both of them were amazing, really cool, um, and a really cool thing to be a part of. Brian Willie will be the camera. We'll use orange mic. Um, And then normally we come out to a rollout, just like a game recap. If you guys could be ready with that, that'd be great. We have between 50 and 70 people whose game day is so crucial and really comes together just based on the scripts that we use. It's very important for our producer and our director so that they're on the same page when we make changes. We're timed out to the second. It really, really helps us make sure that we've got everything accounted for and that our timing is down. And you're on. One of my favorite moments in every game is right after the anthem. Just the collective moment where we all come together and can just take this moment of 
calm or excitement or whatever emotion you're feeling right before the football game. And I get to see 76,000 people experience that together. I mean, there's not very many jobs in this world where you can see all of your hard work and instantly get reaction and, and feedback on what kind of job you're doing. We really are trying to make sure that ultimately there's great football happening, that we're giving our team a home field advantage, and we're leaving fans with an amazing experience. Well, that'll do it for this week's edition of Broncos Country Connected. For more great content, follow us at Broncos TV on Instagram and Twitter, and be sure to check out the Broncos YouTube channel. We'll see you next week. Broncos Country Connected is brought to you by Ford Trucks. Built better. Built stronger. Built Ford Tough.